This is Shauna Odeb from the Flying Cat Academy. In today's lesson, we will be learning about the structure of an Orton Gillingham lesson plan. This is where we put all the pieces together. In previous lessons, you've learned about the different drills that you're going to be doing. You've been learning about the different content that you're going to put in your, in your lessons. And today we learn what will the lesson actually look like? What is the order of events and how do you do it? I like to think about the lesson plan in three sections. I always begin with the sight word study method, and then I do all of my re review drills. So the body of the first part of the lesson is all about what the student knows already. We're activating prior knowledge and we're reinforcing what we've already taught. Then we move on to section two, and that's where the new material is going to be introduced, and that's all about reading. And then the third section is where we address the writing. And we always end by reviewing our key concepts that we've taught or that we're working on. When a student arrives on my doorstep for a lesson, the first thing that I do after greeting them is we begin with a brain stimulating exercise. There's an old saying that dyslexics are the only people who are truly in the right brain. And what we want to do is activate both sides of their brain before we begin our lesson. So we do some kind of exercise that encourages um, them to cross their midline of their body. I like to use koosh balls, but there's many, many different brain stimula stimulating exercises that you could do as long as you have that principle of crossing. Let's get both sides for brain working, Sebastian. that you already were working on. So if you grab a pencil, I will say one of the words, you repeat the word, and then you write it down. You got it? Once we finish taking a few moments to stimulate the student's brain by doing a brain-based stimulating exercise, then we move on to the sight word study method. The student brings a binder to class, and the teacher has a binder that looks almost identical and keeps all the pages and um, items that the student is working on. So there's a copy that the teacher has in their binder, and there's a copy that the student has in their binder, because sometimes the students forget their binder. So the students would have their sight words um, listed on index cards, and then I put them in a little Ziploc baggie, and I poke them through the rings of the binder, so they're right at the very front of their binder, binder zipped up in that Ziploc so they can't get lost. And the student opens up their book, at the start of the class to train them to do this and they take out their sight words. If they've forgotten their binder or their sight words, then I have a copy of the sight words too and I also have the sight words listed at the top of my lesson plan, which I will show you at the end of this um, video. So how would the sight word study method look when it's actually happening in a class? I have a video clip to show you. Let's get going. There you go. So the way we do it with our lessons is we start on one side of the table and we work our way down. Let's start with the sight word study method. So we'll start with some of the ones that you already were working on. So if you grab a pencil, I will say one of the words, you repeat the word, and then you write it down. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Your word is blue. So you repeat the word. Blue. And you can see, yeah, could you say B? Helps if you say it as you write it. B L E U. No, that's on there. What is it? You don't know. B L E U. I'm just going to go E. Okay, let's have a look. How'd you? You did. Now, what were you thinking that it might be? Yeah, I don't know. It just seemed wrong. No, but you actually got it right. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, your word is three. Three. Let's see if I should do it. T-H. 
on E to E. Okay. Let's do your check. How do you do? Perfect. Nice. You want to give yourself a check? Why didn't we give Blue a, a check? We did. Oh, well, you did? Yeah. Okay, your next one is yellow. Got it. You do? You have yellow in your hand, but write it with a pencil. We'll check it with the marker. How many syllables are in yellow? Yellow. Oh. So what's the first syllable? Yellow. Yeah. Okay, ready for your next one? <laughs> part. I will take a part of Sebastian's fairy castle. No, could you get in that? Oh, would I? I took a part of your fairy castle? Oh, I wouldn't do that. I thought you were going to help me make it. I thought, I didn't know you were going to take a piece out of it. <laughs> I thought taking a part would mean like helping me. Oh. I thought, I didn't, I didn't think you would have a piece off it. I won't, I promise. Um, okay, give yourself a check there. How'd you do? Give yourself a self check. Your next one is little. Say the word. Little. And give yourself a check. How do you do? When I say give yourself a check, I mean like self-check it. Um, <laughs> you thought I was telling you it was right? Yeah. No, that's wrong. I'm sorry that I was really bad on me. But I was right. You are right, yes you are. Okay. And oil is your last one. I saw this one. You saw it? Mm -hmm. Like through my card or you did I hold it badly? You should hold it badly. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like you knew it anyway? Yeah. So you would have got it right even if you hadn't seen it? Yeah, I guess. Should I got what I'm asking really is should we give it a check or not? Just sort of... I want to check. Okay. I probably would have known it. I think you would have because you said it earlier today. Okay, so we are going to get a new sight word today. And it came from your writing last time you were doing um, a writing passage for me. And I noticed that this one was spelled incorrectly. So what word is that one? Goes. Yeah. So let's do the sight word study method to learn how to spell goes. And before we do that, I just wanted to maybe show you why I was thinking it got spelled incorrectly and why that is a good way to spell it. So you knew a little bit about open syllables, so what would that word be? Go. Yeah, so what would be the way you'd want to spell goes? Go. You would do that, right? Yeah. But what is that? If I close it in, how, how would you have to read that? Goss. Goss, yeah. So the purpose of the E here is so that you won't read it as goss. So that's the function of that E. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you read the word. And what's our next step? In the cipher to method. Uh -huh. You take two fingers. P-O-S-E goes. P O S E. Oh, oh. Yes, goes. Yeah. Did you say? Yes, goes. Okay. And now, what's the next step? Do you remember? Um, With the back of a pencil, we're going to trace e. it. O E S. Mm -hmm. And goes. Yeah, one more time. Step four. Oh. Three. 
these two fingers. So I read right, the whole thing on like. And you just pointed this one on like. Well, I just highlighted the important parts so you can open remember. I just read the whole thing. Oh, I was supposed to read that little piece. You guys, what, what's the next step? On table? Mm -hmm. Oops. Just table. with your fingers. <laughs> I did with the pencil. Do we look at our card? G. O. E. S. Ghost. Good. Did you, I didn't hear you say it. The ghost. You have to say that should do it. G. O. E. S. Ghost. Okay. And what's your last step? G O S E. Nope. Let's look at it. G O E S goes. O E S goes. Okay, think you got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, try it. Let's try to write it down. Now you have to Good. Once we finish the sight word study method, we'll move on to the short vowel drill. This is where the students are taking two fingers and tracing the shape for all the short vowel sound pictures. Apple, Eddie, Itchy, Olive, Up. And then they say the key sentence and they really exaggerate the vowel sound so it'll sound like fat, Ed, is, not, up. Or maybe you've thought of a better sentence by now. Let's hope so. This drill is something that you'll use in every class when you're just starting with the student. But once they master those short vowel sounds, this drill is taken out of the lesson. I've had some students that showed mastery and then later on in the progression after I've taken the drill out, I actually, I actually brought it back in for a short amount of time because I noticed there was some confusion. And I only brought in the sounds that I noticed the confusion. Um, with. Okay, so we don't do our short vowel drill because you're such a pro at short vowels, so we're going to carry on to the phonemic awareness drill. Move on to the phonemic awareness drill. And in this section, this is where we're using the little colored tiles. And there's no graphemes on the tiles, they're just colored tiles, just blank. Um, I've had some students who didn't have colored tiles and they wanted to use Lego pieces and that's fine too. You're just looking for things that have different colors that are kind of the same shape. And this is a very important drill because it's where the actual rewiring of the brain um, can be seen to be happening. And we rewire the brain for reading by doing activities like blending, deletion, substitution, addition, and all of this happens in the phonemic awareness drill. Have a look at how that might look in a lesson. Let's put this over here. There you go. Could you take out sounds for the word box? Dash, take them out and say the sound. Oh, okay, that's a great for the study word method, but we're gonna, um, this was all about sounds, so you're gonna go and box. Excellent. Okay, so that's box. Oh, hey, we're gonna we're gonna still use that. Let me put that away. So what do we have? P O X. Let's do the sounds. Box. Okay. So that's box. Can you find the book in box? Okay. And I would like to change that to it. T. What do I have now? Check this in. T. O. Oh. This was box. Talk. We have box. Yeah. Is that a word? No. What if we added an it at the end? Talks it. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna keep that. Box. Let's keep keep the talks it. Talks it. Talks. Talks it would make a word. Would you put the talks. same color as the start? Well, I don't have enough pieces for everything. Talks it. 
No, why don't we do it? Yes, put the k on the end. That's a good one. Okay, you can put those away. Okay, take out the sounds for the word tent and take them out and say them as you take them out. Tent. Okay, so if that is tent, what would happen if I took the t? Can you find the t? Oh, look at this. If this is tent, are there any two sounds in that word that are the same? Excellent. Now take the first sound t that you have. Your first t. Find that. And can you change that to a b? If that's bent, can you take the b off of bent? And what do you say? Nice. So I wonder if you have enough that you could put a sp on the front of ent. What would you have now? Spent. Oh, that's good. Find the e in spent. And change it to an e. So if it was spent and you changed it to an in, what do you have? Spent. Spent. Yeah, is that a word? No. No. If we had more, I could put a er in there and we could have sprint, but alas. Oh, well, we did have enough. Did we? Yeah, we did. Spur and oh you're right, you could have done it. We should have done it. Oh, look, we did. F P R I N P. Good spelling. Look, look, we have it. I know, we could have done it. Look, no, we have it, though. Oh, just because we have six there? Yeah. Nice. We'll say we did it. Yeah. Okay. Still in the review section of the lesson, and now we move on to the visual drill. We have index cards, and there's graphemes on the index cards, and these are all the graphemes that the student is working on at that, at that moment. In this drill, we're trying to build automaticity. This is where the rapid naming is, com is coming in. We want them to match the grapheme to the correct phoneme. And this is a very important skill for students if they're going to be able to read. We want them to be able to recall those sounds really quickly. Let's look at how that might look. Okay. So let's go on to the visual drill. In the visual drill, um, I'll show you the card. You give me the name of the grapheme, so I'd say ILD, ILD, right? Yeah. Okay. Now we, we're pretty good at phonemes, Jen, so that's, there's some advanced ones going on. Not to brag, but what's this then? Yeah, yeah, I. But you have to have to say the name first. Why? Yeah, yeah, I. Pretty good, eh? And then say, say the name by a spell. Ank. Ank. So you'd say ch, k, ch. So those are the sounds, but could you say ch first? Ch, k, ch. It's good. In, in, in. When we move on to the auditory drill, I think of this one as the opposite of the visual drill. Like the visual drill, we're trying to build automaticity. We're trying to increase that ability to rapidly name things. But instead of showing the student a card, the teacher will be saying the sound, so the phoneme. And then once the, the teacher presents the phoneme, the student is going to go through some steps and then write the grapheme. There's a lot of little steps in this drill. It seems like a really quick, easy one, but the steps are actually really important, so make sure you follow them. How would that look in a lesson? Let's see. Auditory drill. Let's get our sound section out. Can you open up your notebook to your sound section? Sound 
section is. Just hold it. We just need to find a blank page. Okay. So in this one, there's a bunch of little steps. So I say the name of the sound, you repeat the sound. You got it? Okay. And then as you write down the sound, you're going to say it. Yeah. And then you're going to say graphing and you're going to underline it. Okay. That's the last step. You got it? Yeah. Okay. So your first one is ah. Do you say? Ah. And then as you write it, you say it again. So you write ah. it. And now you, you underline it and say the name. Oh. Excellent. You did it perfectly. Yeah. 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 Ah. So, so good. Yeah. 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 Why? Excellent. How about old? Old? Mm hmm. O O D? So, you can start off by just repeating old. Old. Yeah. And then once you finish, you're O L D. Yeah. And you underline it. Excellent. You say that as you do it? TH. That's why you underline it. Awesome. Okay, good job, baby. Now we move on to syllable pounding. This is the last thing that we do in the review section of the lesson. Syllable pounding is all about helping the student to hear the larger words in parts. We'll choose some nice closed syllables such as fan, tas, tick. And we'll say the word fantastic in a natural way. And then we'll ask the student, how many syllables do you hear? And they're gonna pound it out. So they take their hand and for every syllable that they hear, they say fan, tass, tick. Um, you could have them use names. So Shauna, and that's not um, an example of a closed syllable, but it's nice if they can hear their own name too. If they have trouble, then one thing you can do is have them touch under their mouth and for every syllable they're going to feel their chin hit their hand. So let's try that in with the word fantastic. Fan-tas-tic. And that's a great kinesthetic method, me method to help them to hear those syllables because they're feeling the syllables as well. And uh, so we'll try and focus on closed syllables. Maybe do like five words and You'll be amazed at how quick. Now we're ready to move on to section two, the reading part of the lesson. This is the part of the lesson that begins with a blending drill or a syllable card drill. And when I'm introducing a new syllable type, I often use the blending drill. And as we get further into the progression, we change into the syllable card drill. The blending drill is when you are giving individual cards that have graphemes on them and the student puts the words together by putting those individual sounds together and then you change one of the sounds and it changes the word. We'll use nonsense words and real words. And then the syllable card drill is where you have index cards with many different syllables on them. We'll have, we'll begin with two syllables when we're at, close to the start of a progression and then we'll build up to three syllables and possibly four syllables and the students can unscramble those cards to create real words. They can put them together to make nonsense words. So it's in that section, it's either the blending drill or the syllable card drill. I will give you an example now of me doing the syllable card drill with Sebastian. Here goes. So now we're gonna go on to our syllable card drill. And you'll see that I have color coded these. So there's three syllables because you like the challenge and your job is to try and make three syllable words. Every word is going to have one pink, which is going to be the start, one green, which is going to be the middle, and one yellow, which is going to finish it up. So let's start off by just reading them all. So start here. Okay. Yes. Discontent. 
Oh, okay, but let's just read them all first. But I guess that's very fast. Let's try to read them all. Dip thanks as Khan. Khan gives this Khan ish. I think that's it. In yeah. ten. Ten. Okay. Now you want to go for it? Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. Discontent. Now, do you have three colors there? Discontent. Excellent. There. Discontent. When you read it out loud, it actually Ton Assis. Oh, Assistant. Good one. Um, give. Thanks, give in. Good job. Con Tonish. Ooh, that must be one. I'm Con Tonish. Yeah, you must have given me something wrong. I wonder if I did. Well, try switching these two. Now try that. Does it do they work? As tarnish. Read this one. Read this one. As tarnish. Now read it fast. As tarnish. Oh, astonish. Astonish! I'm astonished that you got them all that quickly. And then what would this one be? Consistent. Yeah. And do you know what consistent is? Do it again and again. Yeah. In the same way, yeah. We're, so we're consistently trapping the fish for as consistently as possible. We're trying our best. When we look at the structure of the lesson, it tells us that in the reading section, we begin with the blending or syllable card drill, and then we deal with syllable pounding. And as you know, we've already done that in the review section. So I put it here just so you know that sometimes I do use that technique in the reading section. If I think it's valuable when the student's doing the syllable card drill and they need to do some pounding, um, then we do it. And I use that technique all throughout the lesson, but it often comes up in reading. If we don't need it, then on we go. So the next part of the lesson is the review section. And we're going to review the key concepts that we've taught recently. We will always try to use multi-sensory te techniques when we do this. You guys are experts on cores, card sorts by this time. And we might use the blending drill. We could use those sliders that we use when we do the exceptions to the closed syllable rule. It only takes about three to five minutes to do a quick review. And we might, I mean, that is unless you're actually doing a review lesson. So you're either going to move on to new content or you would have the whole lesson, the whole new content part of the lesson could be a review if you think the student's not ready to move on. Now we're going to review the TCH rule. So you'll notice here that I have some TCHs and I have some CHs, and you're going to decide when do you need a CH and when do you need a TCH. So let's get our bases. If I had this one, what's this one? Right. And I want to turn that into crunch. So would I add a TCH or CH? So you can pull down the one you think you need. Good correction. How, how did you know it was CH instead of TCH? Because it has an M. Ah, there's a consonant here. So if it was this word, cra, what would I do? TCH. You got it. Okay, so let's try a different one. What's that? What's that word? Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Good job. Now, on this one, I put a special little mark here. Do you know what this mark means? Four. That means I want you to read it like a short vowel. Because we... Very good. Catch. You got it. You know why I did that? Why? Because I know that you know a little bit about open syllables, and you might read that as hey. Because you know that there's not a consonant closing it in. Ah, I think I would have it. You might have got it. But I'm going to go. Okay, what about this one? Hutch. And you're going to add that TCH there or the CH? CH. You got it. Okay, what about this one? Catch. Is catch a word? Yeah. It is. Do you catch? Wouldn't it? Or is that catch? Oh, catch. I is catch. catch a word? I catch in the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear the bell sound out? So this is no. eh. 
I could change it. Or what, what about this? Let's just make it into a little word. Now what do you got? Ketchup. That's right, and that's how you spell ketchup. Should I change it for you? Well, no, because it actually is an A. Well, I can't change it, should I? If you want to change that to an A, which you could, then you'd have to change this to a C. Catch. Wait, what was that? What was that? Okay. Oh, okay. Very few words are starting with a K, but that's one of them. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, if I said Jeff will pass buzz, what am I talking about? When you go more, when you add to the base. So here are your little tiles, and they've got the doubles. And I want to know, yeah. when are you going to double? And if this is one that you double, then you put the tile right on it. So what would that one be? F-O-F oh, F plus. Yeah, and is that a double? So is that spelled correctly? Um, yeah, it is, because if it was just one Z, it would be incorrect, because if it's a one-syllable word with a short vowel, so close syllable, the ends in Z, we're going to double it. Okay, so what about this one? So you ask yourself, is this one a short syllable, close syllable, ending in one of these letters? No. Yeah, no. Okay, so would that one get doubled? No. Okay. How about this one? What's that word? Glass. Mm-hmm. So a lass is another word for a girl. Let's put it right on top to correct it. Nicely done. That's how you spell lass. Okay, how about this one? Corn. Yeah, does that one need to get doubled? No. no. Is that one, that one means against con. Mm -hmm. Con, like a, yeah. I think it's also a prisoner. A con, no, convict? Convict. I, I need to have convict. Right? Sometimes they say, oh, he's a con. What does that mean when A con is like something bad. Con. Like a person who's trying to trick you, maybe? Like a con, yeah. Yeah. And someone who's trying to trick you. Yeah. Okay, how about this one? Do we need to double the G in this one? What's this word? Rig. Mm-hmm. Doubled or not? Nope. So is it spelled correctly? Um, to move on to the new lesson part of the reading section. This is where you teach the new concept tent. The new content is determined by your syllable progression sheets that come from the Dyslexia Training Institute. You're going to move along at the student's pace. So if the student is not ready to move on to their new material, then you just make it a review lesson. And in this new section lesson, you would teach the review content. We're going to use multi-sensory teaching techniques, just like we always do. And I'll show you an example of what that would be like. In this example, I am teaching Sebastian about the CK rule. Okay, good work. Now we go on to the new part of the lesson. Wait, something new. Yeah. What is it? Dum, dum, dum. This is, is, it, is it a good thing? I think so. I think it's a great spelling thing. And it's the CK rule. Well, I think it's a good thing. Well, we'll find out because we're about to do it. So this is the CK rule. And this is, I know you saw this at the beginning, and this is the milk truck. And you said, why is there a milk truck? And now we're going to find out. So there's a spelling rule. And sometimes words like, like truck here have CK. Sometimes they don't, like in milk. Mm -hmm. So there's a pattern that'll tell you when you need to use CK and when you need to use K. Mm -hmm. just, just like there's a pattern that says when we do CH and when we do TCH, right? Can you guess the pattern? That's not an L. You do a CK. So in a one syllable base, these are both one syllable, close syllables, that ends in a K sound. If the sound directly before the k sound is a short vowel, you're going to use ck. If it's not a short vowel, you're just going to use k. Mm -hmm. Does that remind you a lot of the tch and ch rule? I don't really remember. Okay. <laughs> you don't really remember that one? 
I guess. So when it was a short vowel, like huh, you knew that you were going to add the special. And the special was PCH. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's the opposite. No, just if it's a short vowel here, we're going to add CK. But that's a, like a C H. I like a C H. Mm hmm does, doesn't it? So if, we're, if we're applying this rule, this word would be? Trudge. Is that a, that's not a real word. But that is? I got it. Okay. So there's lots and lots of words that we can use this to help us. To help us uh, become better spellers. So I thought that we would practice using the rule. And I'll give you a little card that has the start of the word. And then we'll apply the rules that are right here. And you can either put a K or a CK, depending on what's needed. And you'll see I put this little symbol again. This means short vowel. So what would this word read as? Bong. Bong. And I want to change it to bong plus a k sound. So what would the word be if I had a k? Bonk. Bonk. OK, but I want to know how to spell bonk. So it's a one syllable word. I want it to end in the K sound. Is the sound directly before it? The K? A short vowel? Is this a short vowel? Yep. This is a vowel? But no, it's like not a short vowel, but it's like a That's a consonant. Right. So if it's not a short vowel, I'm gonna do that. Okay. So you could write down on this side under the K, you could write down bunk. Bonk. Nicely done. Now, how about this one? Tuck. Yeah. Okay. okay, you knew right away. How did you know right away? Oh, hang on, we're going to put it on the CK side. Sorry, no, I'm just good. I just knew it. So how did you know it, though? Because of? Just did. Because it's got a short vowel before the cuss sound. That's right, a little tied to your hair. This is not, this is a CK and not a CH. Okay. What about this one? Which one are we going to add there? Okay, now what's that word? Pack. And how, how did you know it had to be CK? Is it a one syllable word? Mm. It is. Does it end in the k sound? Well, actually, you, have, you made this a little line so it's easier. I did. I, I just want you to know that that's a short vowel because if it's all by itself, you might say pay because it looks like a one syllable. Okay, so you told me it's a one syllable word. Mm -hmm. Does it end in the k sound? Here? Mm. Is this the k sound? Is the sound directly before the k a short vowel? Yep. So that you have to spell it ck. Yep. Okay. Try this one. What do you have right here? Ill. Okay. Is it a ck or a k? K. Okay, so put it on. And how did you know? Okay, so so this is not a short vowel, right? Is pilk a word? No. No. If I had an M there, it could be milk. Okay. Do you want to include made up words on here or just the real words? Oh, whatever. Made up words. Okay. So pilk. Or you could change it to milk. Okay, let's do one more. What's this word? Or this syllable. Cuss. Okay. Cuss. And I want to put a k sound on the end. So what we can turn it into. Okay, so now what's the word? And what's the word? S is on. No, that's the S. Okay, 
why. So is the word husk. Do you know what husk is? Husky. That's true. It's like yeah. that type of dog. Um, or a husk of a corn is the outer shell of a corn. Okay. If I took away the S like you wanted to, I'd have to do that, wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. It's the name of a character in a book you like. Puck. Yeah. Puck of the you got it. Okay, so does this make sense? Pass? Uh, the rule CK. CK is good. When to use CK and when not to. So we're going to put the CK spelling rule sheet in your book. And I'm hoping that it's going to make sense why we have milk truck as a way to remember when to put CK and when to just put K. Does that, do you think that's a good way to remember? Milk truck? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's fine. <laughs> why do you think we use that? Like, why? Why do I think it's a good way to remember? Because it's the example of both. You got it. Very good. Okay, pick up your pencil and we'll carry on. That's very good stuff, Sam. We've taught the new lesson. It's time to work with the new concept. I like to think of this the remainder of the reading part of the lesson as working from the ground up. So we start working at an individual grapheme and phoneme level. We're using letter cards or magnetic tiles, and we're using the narrative sheet listed uh, shown here to teach a child how to read a word. Then we move on to the whole word, providing the student with single words on a list that all relate to what we taught or previously taught concepts. Then we move on to connected text and then finally comprehension text. So it's like moving into from the small to the large. Let me show you how um, using letter cards and tiles might work in a lesson. Okay, I'm gonna pick up your chair. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Let's move on now. Okay, so I will tell you a sound and you'll pick out the sound and then we're gonna work on CK and K. So the first sound I'm looking for is mmm. Oh, you're going to put it upside down? Yeah. Right, I think they look a little different. Let's just do that, do it that way. Okay, so I got my mmm. Now I want to eh. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. So what do you have? Milk. You do. Okay, if that's milk, what would happen if I took the I and changed it to E? What do you got? Milk. Is milk a word? No. Let's keep it there. Take the M mm off. And what do you got? Milk. Now, is that a real word? Yes. Yeah, we used to have them in our house. We did? We did at our old house in Telpa. There was elks. Yeah, but there's a small herd in Telpa. Elks. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No. Yeah, there is. I've never seen any. Yeah, they're rare. But you know where I used to always see them? Was at the cabin we had before you were born. That's a little bit away from that house that you were born in. They're beautiful. Okay, um, let's try. Let's put those ones back. I was gonna let you yeah, I know you were. <laughs> you do that. Yeah, I thought that's what you were doing. Let's try to find. <sighs> yeah, we can do that. I'm looking at that one. So, <sighs> I'm looking for it. So, you say it. Say the sound. Yeah, I find it. Okay. Oh, that is the second sound I'm looking for. Put on the end of that. 
That's a lovely word, but I'm looking. Hun. What are you looking for now? No, hunt. Hunk. Oh, hunk. Hunt. 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 Oh, you want hunk. No, you were looking for our CH. Where do we put it? No, I wasn't. You want it? CH yeah. Hunk is good. Oh, there we go. Okay. You could be hunch, yeah. But I was looking for a k sound at the end. But that's what I put that there. Okay. Nice. Oh, wait a second. You had it right before. The k sound. Oh. Because why does that have to be that? Why is it not CK? Because it is. Okay, well, <laughs> what? Because it's not a vowel? Yeah, which one is not a vowel? The consonant. Touch it. That one, the end, right? And not just any vowel, but a short vowel in a one syllable word. So we're looking at the sounds directly before the k sound. It's time to move on to the word list. There's an example provided here, and you want the words that you choose to reflect the content of your new lesson. When I show you the video clip that I have of me teaching Sebastian, you'll see that the words that I chose, many of them relate directly to the CK rule, or they're showing past content that we've covered. The number of words that you choose to put on this list is going to, to depend on your student's reading ability level. Sometimes I have the student only read one column, and then I assign the other column for homework. And let's try a reading list. This is going to use our different k sounds, so you look at sometimes it's going to be a k, sometimes a ck, but it's always k. Okay. You ready to read? Okay. Milk, truck, trick, track, black, black, yuck, puck, Pluck, wink, prank, tink, twink, plank, flank, fan lank. Yeah, I got it right the first time. Plank, lank, wink. Good reading. That was great, Seth. Now, some of these weren't real words, but they were parts of words. Can you think of a word that twink you could add to it to make it a real word? Twinkie. Twinkie? <laughs> I don't think you have ever, ever, ever read a twinkie. I don't think I have. Wait, well, you no, know, maybe once in my life. Once, oh. maybe. I was thinking Twinkle, but Twinkie, yeah. I'd have to capitalize it because it's a brand name. I think I have one. How about Tink? Once in my life. But I remember that Matthew Katzman had a big floaty of Twinkie. That's true. I like that. I like the big floaty. And Tink is a syllable, but can you think of a, another syllable to add to make it a real word? Tink. Oh, we know Tinka. Yeah. When you pee, you go. Yeah. Tinkle. Oh. <laughs> All right. Or I guess if you were a guy who fixed a lot of little gadgets, you could be a tinker. Have you heard that? I tinker. The tinker, yeah. I don't understand that. You don't understand? Tinker? Yeah, I don't understand it much. Uh, not, in, not in light of the fact that it's tinkle when you pee. I'd have to look up what the, what the meaning of teeth is, I guess, eh? To really understand that. It's time for the connected text portion. This is where the student is reading complete sentences. The sentences are created by the teacher and they will relate to the content being taught in the new lesson part of the lesson, and also past concepts. The sight words that you choose are going to always be ones that the student has already mastered in their sight words, or ones that they're currently working on. I often add pictures to this section, but I never let the students see the pictures before they've read the text. If you want to use pictures, then I recommend that you put them on a separate page and you show them to the student after they've read the sentences. We don't want them using those pictures as a means to guess what the text is, is telling them. We want them to use their decoding skills. So that's why we want them to have a pictureless um, print and then the pictures come after. Okay, now we're moving on to sentences that use the cuss sound. You ready for it? Okay. And read out loud. You're looking for clear, smooth reading. <sighs> the book truck back into the cabin by the lake. Good. The cat finds fresh tracks in the muck. The chimp has luck when it spins a trap and sets. 
there in the bush. Let me read this one one more time. The chimp has luck when it swings the trap in the trap to catch him. To catch him in the bush. Now I found some interesting facts about. Well, you're in the chimp house, luck. Well, that's what I want to show you. So the, the, there's these bunch of chimpanzees, like they look like that. They're pretty cute. That are over in Africa in a place called Guinea. And they're learning how to out outwit human hunters. So they, the human hunters see this as a snare, and they set it to trap these chim chimpanzees and they eat them for me. But the chimps are pretty smart, and they're actually learning how to spring the traps. So they come back and the trap's sprung and they've taken the food. They're like, thanks for the meal. That's pretty cool, eh? Do that, that people ever catch stuff? Yes, that they they want to eat them, so the unlucky ones do get eaten. But they, these guys are going out and they're looking for the traps to intentionally deactivate the traps and take the food. Pretty cool. Yeah. Now, the one that said the cat finds fresh tracks in the muck, what image comes to your mind? It's going so close. What kind of cat is it? A lion. Okay, a lion. And he's going in circles? No, maybe he's attacking someone. Could be. Here is what I discovered. I was thinking of the cheetah, and look what they attached to his neck. Mm -hmm. Shock so, collar. No, I don't think it's a shock collar. I think it's um, so they can track his speed and where he is. So it says that they put this on five different cheetahs, and seven zebras and seven antelope. Um, and if the prey is running fat, flat out, like, they, they're trying to understand, like, how can animals get away from cheetahs because they're so fast? And if an animal tries to, like, race at top speed, then they're going to get killed because this guy is just running down. So the animals are starting to slow down. It's, like, they're starting to have a different technique to get away. The only way that the antelope can escape, they're finding, is by totally reducing their speed at a key moment. And then this guy shoots past them, and they can quickly turn. If they try and just go fast, they don't have the ability to turn quickly. Mm -hmm. Who does? The antelope. These guys, these guys are not as quick at slow. They're not as maneuverable at slow speeds. So if the, if it's a slow chase, the antelope has a chance because it can yeah. go twist, turn, twist, turn. But if this guy's running for too fast, then he'll just run down the antelope. Because you know how when you run super super fast, it's sometimes hard to turn. Do you find that? Mm. Well. Maybe not you because you're Sebastian. <laughs> well. The average person. If, if I'm running super fast and I want to turn, I would just jump and crash and then just bounce off something and come back. <laughs> well, that would be good if, unless a cheetah was after you. You know, there was a cheetah at a zoo and a woman got out with her child to take a picture. She was a completely foolish woman. And uh, the cheetah did not attack her because she went all Hamilton on him and she went up like this. And she like approached the cheetah and the cheetah didn't know what to do because it, it was used to people running away. So it didn't attack, it wasn't in attack mode. So what do you mean? Well, so because she had this very strange reaction of, of instead of being, she had her baby right, so she wanted to protect the baby. And so she's like, that's my baby. And she, she went at the cheetah like this. Yeah. And as she was getting back to the car, she went like that. And not turning back to challenge the cheetah was probably what saved her. Because the cheetah was like, what's happening? And it stopped him from his fight mode. He didn't attack. Comprehension text is the last part of the reading section. In this section, we are giving the student a little story to read. And when they're just at the start of the closed syllable, it's quite a challenge for the teacher to find appropriate text because we have these restrictions. We have to use only the fair words, right? So we're using closed syllables as much as possible. We are using only the sight words that the student has mastered. So it really limits what the story is going to look like. And that's just fine. Before you know it, they'll be on to more complicated text. Here's a little story that I wrote for a beginner. And once again, if you want to use pictures, that's fine, but it's good to put them on a separate page because you don't want the student to be guessing what the story is about based on those pictures. What you want them to do is use their decoding skills. And they do really like the pictures. 
um, but just always make sure that you don't show them to them in, in advance. Before you know it, that student will be ready to move on. They'll have their basic decoding skills, and once they do, then I change from writing the comprehension text to a proper fluency program. Fluency is the one thing that's not addressed in the Orton-Gillingham method, so we have to add it ourselves. There are two great programs that I use. One is called Read Naturally, and one is called the Six Minute Reading Solution. Fluency is a combination of speed and accuracy. So once the student has developed phonemic awareness, that's the bottom of the reading pyramid, and once they have solid decoding skills, they're ready to move on to a fluency program like one of these two. With my son, I mostly stuck to the Read Naturally program and it worked like a charm. It's an excellent choice. It gets great reviews, so I would recommend it. And the six minute reading solution is great too. It doesn't have the same reading comprehension questions. So if you wanted to have the pretty picture and the extra questions, then I'd recommend Read Naturally. Here's an example of how it would look when I'm using the Read Naturally program with Sebastian. Okay, so last time we did this was a whole week ago before hockey camp. Mm -hmm. So this was about the basilisk lizard. And I think this is your, is it your second reading of it or third? Second reading. So because you did your prediction. I want to see what my prediction was. I always pick these ones. Okay, what do you got? I think that the basilisk lizard has a water on the go through his twinges and shoots out through his chest. Oh, um, crest. Do you remember what I said about that? I made a great one. Yeah, that was beautiful. I loved your detail in it. Like you used some really good descriptive words, like the fringes, and you said shoots up through his crest. That was good stuff. I like the more details you add, the more impressed I am. Come well, on, I like to make the point you like that. Don't you ever, don't you ever, um, don't you ever the uh, stegosaurus? He, he must have a lot of dishes to do. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we had some, we had some keywords here. Water was one, clear liquid in lakes and rivers and streams, run to move fast on foot, crest, I think that's his crest, right? Mm -hmm, that's his crest. A tuft of feathers or a growth on an animal's head, um, fringes, thin strips that hang, so there's just fringes. And then what other words are in bold? We got this one right here, do you remember that one? This one in bold right here? A Ancient. Ancient. Ancient Greece. And this one? Climate. The battle is good. And tropics. There's your crest. There's your fringes. And then there's no more until the end. Dash, distance, and surface. Okay. You can start whenever you want to. Don't look at that lizard! Just don't let hands breathe on you! Or, or one or the breathe. Ah, oh, no. Well, you must try again. Don't let it breathe on you. One look of breeze could turn you to stone. Did you believe that? A long time ago, in ancient Greece, people believed the myth about lizards that could do those things. It was called the basilisk lizard. The basilisk lizard that lived in the tropics today is still frightening to look at. It has a crest on its head. That looks like a helmet. There are fr finger fringes of skin on its head and back, and its tail is grows to be two, three feet long. One of the most amazing things about the lizard is that different ways it moves around. Some swing and from and claw, some climb, some even sail from tree to tree. Some have them have legs that don't have legs at all. They move. Okay, what'd you get? Move. Okay, can you add it up? I think it was 32. It's not there like that. I probably got two wrong, no? You got two, right? Okay. Wow, that's great. Send it to move. So 124, 526, 32. So let me write that down and we'll chart it later on. Okay. What word do you think you stumbled on? Well, you stumbled here, but you didn't make a mistake there. You just slowed down a little bit. Oh. So that's fine. Yeah, I thought we didn't make yeah. mistakes. I thought you did quite well.
Good job, bud. No. Okay. So I'm going to read it for you, and then we can do four of the uh, multiple choice questions. You ready for it? Yeah. You want me to read with great expression? Don't look at that lizard. Don't let it breathe on you. One look or breath could turn you to stone. Is that exciting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying. Exciting. Did you believe that? A long time ago in ancient Greece, people believed a myth about a lizard that could do those things. It was called a basilisk lizard. The basilisk lizard lives in the tropics. Um, today is still frightening to look at. It has a crest on its head that looks like a helmet. There are fringes of skin on its head, back, and tail. It grows to be two or three feet long. One of the most amazing things about lizards is the different ways they move around. Some swim, some climb, some even sail from tree to tree. How would they sail from tree to tree? They got big fringes. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you're exactly right. Maybe they have fringes like between their arms or something. Some, or I guess, I guess maybe. I really don't know. Some of them have no legs at all. Maybe they swim. They move like snakes. Wow. The basilisk was removed by raising the front of its body up and running on its back legs. It must look like a little person. It can run fast, almost 18 miles per hour. Not only yeah, it's probably exactly like it will be. Yeah. Not only can it run on land, but it can even make a dash for a distance across the surface of water before it starts to swim. That's pretty cool. It could walk on <laughs> for a little bit. How long? I don't know. We have. We should like look it up on a video and like get a little sense of like what it actually does, eh? But it goes so fast that it can probably just like on water for a while. Now I wanted to show you something here. And I must have pretty good feet to do that though. So in this title, how many um, sounds are in the, how many syllables in the word basilisk? You want to pound it out? Yes. What do you pound it out? Basilisk. I am looking for, there it is. You are multiple, multiple choice. So let's read the question before we answer it. What is the main idea of this story? Okay, what do you think it is? Probably. Hmm, people believed myths about the past of the soldier. Is the whole thing about the myths? Not totally, but then it's not the but the bad things going to yeah. The whole thing's not about that. Right. So what do you think of the last one? People. Wait, this. That's the first thing about spreading your attack. That was not even right. Um, looks frightening. So this whole first section is about it looking frightening, and then the last section is about it running really fast. So I think like. Of the three answers, what do you think is the best answer? Because I don't think anyone's a perfect answer there. <laughs> if you had to pick, though. <laughs> I'll go see. I would do. Nice try, though. <laughs> okay, what this? Well, actually, I didn't actually mean to. I just took all the wrong one of this. <laughs> okay, I think you can answer this one. We go, though. How does last go? Let's go to the Fast, a little bit, smash. I think it's moved fast. What else would it be? Why are some people afraid of the battle as well? The turn is stone. Excellent. Oh, thanks for that, Rich. Didn't realize we had liked till we did that. Okay, so those look really good. So we'll put those here and then we'll put them into your reading section at the end. At this point, it's time to move on to the third section of the lesson writing. We'll begin with asking the student to tap out some words that relate to the new lesson content. We call this finger tapping. And we can also use words from previously learned concepts too. In the writing section, we are using real words. We want, we're teaching spelling and we want the student to spell words correctly, so we're not using nonsense words here. Just real words. You ready for it? Left hand. So I'll give you the word and you tap her out. Buck. Buck. I like this. Buck. Okay. 
And then with the k sound, I'm wondering if it is this one. So if you went b, uh. Okay. All right. Okay. So if you hear an uh, it's going to be ck. So k. But just know it's this one. Okay, how about, you can even, you can even point it here if you want. We're at it there. Um, how about bunk? Bunk. So let's tap it. Bunk. Good job. Puck. Um. Ah. You got it. Okay, another one is. Where am I? Yank. Yep. So, what's the sound you heard before the cut? You got it. Okay. And the last one is talk. Tick tock. Very good, Sebastian. Okay, let's turn it into writing. Time to use our letter cards or our magnetic letter tiles again. We have them already. They're laid out in a nice rainbow shape. And instead of teaching the student to read a word, this time, because we're in the writing section of the lesson, we're teaching the student to spell a word. So the instructions that you're following are different. This is where you give the student the whole word at the beginning. The student repeats the word, you ask them to put it in a sentence to so make sure that they know what it is. And then you ask the student, what's the first sound that you hear in that word? And they pull down the tile and then you continue until you're at the end of the word. Let's see an example of that. Okay, your word is rock. How would you spell rock? So I should take down the sounds I wanted to say. My first sound is hot. What well, uh, Okay, second so sound in rock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Try dog. Good. And take that CK and add it there. I rock. Excellent. And rock. Oh, good. Let's do that sound. And how about you can put those ones away? Oh, well, actually, I want you to change this one. Find a d and put it on the front. Leave the rock. And you put a d on the front. Rock. Duck, yeah. We're making a duck. Okay. If I put the d away, put a st on the front. Stock. Yeah. So this is star. Thanks. Take, take away that R in stock. And put it in in its place. Every word needs a vowel. What's up, sir? Let's do this way. What do you got? We did in the reading section of the lesson. In the writing section, we're working from the ground up. So when we were working with the tiles, we were doing the graphemes and the phonemes, and now we're working at a single word level. So in this section, we're going to have the student write a list of isolated words, not sentences. They will relate to the content of the lesson or to previously uh, learned concepts that we're still reviewing. And it won't take long, just three to three or five minutes. If a student has trouble 
Um, I often tell them to tap it out. So they use that finger tapping technique so that they can hear the sounds. So I'm going to give you some individual words. Owie on the cook. <laughs> Do you want to go grab it? Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Owie on the cook. Okay, so if you're unsure at all, I want you to tap it out like we just did. Okay, so your first word. Well, if I'm unsure at all, I'm guessless though. Do you think? Uh, you probably want to tap it out because just hearing the sounds will give you a clue, right? So junk. I don't know, I think I'll guess a little but okay. Okay, how about junk? Say the word junk? Junk. Okay, and now as you do it, yeah. Good, I like that set. Okay, your next one is punk. Well done. Now, Rick. You play in a band with a man named Rick. So say the word Rick. We name both. We have a band with two of them, you Right, but one guy's Rick and one's Rich. Yeah. So let's say Rick. Oh, okay. Uh, I say know. Rick. Okay, now do the sounds. Rip. I like how you need to put CK. Now, as a person's name, so what do we always have to do with the person's name? They're, they're important, so you show that they're important by giving them a Why are people so important? Um, lots of things are important. So, like basically names. So, like if I named a country, we get a capital. Animal? Well, it was it was the name of our dog. Because she's an individual dog that means something to us. So capitalist on Skyla, but it, the fact that she's a dog, well, there's lots of dogs. Even people. people. The word people just would have a small p. But if I'm talking about this person, this particular one, and their special name, then you get a capital. You just say bless and this person. Doesn't get a capital. What's that? <laughs> just specific people. Okay. That's being specific. If you point at them and be like right beside them, this person. <gasps> That's pretty specific. Pink. Pink. Okay. So you say pink? Pink. Okay. How'd you know to put just K? I don't know, I just know pink. Oh, okay. Because you learned ink before? Now it's time for connected text. This is where the student is going to write complete sentences. The sentences are created by the teacher and they will relate to the new concept that was taught in this lesson or to um, reviewed concepts as well. The sight words that you use to make the sentences are going to be sight words that have been previously taught or upon which the student is currently working. Once a student finishes writing a sentence, we're going to use CHOPS as a way for the student to check their work. CHOPS stands for, well the C stands for capital. So you'll say, do you have a capital? And the student will check their work and yes, they will. if they don't, they'll fix it. Then handwriting, that's where you tell the student, hey, well, what do you think of your handwriting? You know, is there proper spacing between the individual words? How do you feel about the neatness of your letters? O stands for out loud, so the student's going to read the sentence out loud. P is for punctuation, so we'll make sure that they put a period on the end. And then spelling, they will self-check this by, I'll give them a sheet that has the sentence on it, and then they can check each word to make it sp sure it's spelled correctly. So CHOPS is really nice because once the students realize what those, um, those five letters stand for, it's a way they can self-check their own work. So I'll read the sentence, and then you say the sentence back to me. If you get stuck on a word, try sounding your nose with your tapping, okay? So your first sentence is, the duck swims at dusk. The duck swims at dusk. Okay, let's see if you can write it. We'll get the chops all ready for you here so you can check it. So your sentence is? The duck swims at dusk. Okay, give it a try. Do 
to send it up with your fingers. Good job. You should say that's right. Now do your check. So what's your first thing to look for? Just reading this, I read it. The duck swims at August 11th dusk. Yeah, that, that's perfect. No, that's not perfect. That should be on the No! Line. No, it's perfect it swims at August 11th. But that the wasn't dusk. Exactly. It swims at, at August 11th in the dusk. Well, if you had those extra words, that might make sense. And if I had said that. I block the duck swims at August 11th dusk. Is your punctuation properly put in there? You chose yeah. an exclamation mark, how come? Because it should be the exciting, but the ducks will make Okay, and how's your spelling? The exciting duck. Okay, have a check. Here's the test sentence, so give it a check. The duck swims at dusk. Yep, I think I got it correct. How about this one right here? Duck. Look, look at my Oh, yeah, it's capital. And so it's, unless that's, unless the name is, you could say duck swims at Dusk if it's his name. Oh, maybe, maybe that, is, that is his name. All my mistakes have been. They, they <laughs> yeah, all of them could have looked. Like well, it could have been. Take off the word that. It'd be like, yeah. So it would be duck swims at August 11th. Dusk. <laughs> okay. Here's your second sentence. Are you ready to say it after me? Seb mm. has a pack on his back. But maybe he's very important, so it's like the duck. Ready? Seb has a pack on his back. Say it. Um, Seb has a pack on his back. S E B. Chops. Chops these. Capitals. Handwriting. What do you think of your handwriting? Mm, not so good. How come? Well, oh. Actually, it's okay. It's okay. You're all in one line. Nice spacing. I think you're you harm yourself. How about this? Read it out loud. Don't laugh. Send out the pack on his back. Okay. Punctuation. I always add that. No, I'm just kidding. And here's a copy of check your spelling. Seb has a pack on his back. How'd you do? Um, Seb has a pack on the back. And how was your spelling? Pretty good, I think. Pretty good, it's excellent. Look, you got CK here, you got CK there. That was perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last one. Do not bonk yes. Jeff or Rick. I saw a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. Do, do not bonk Jeff or Rick. Say it. Do not bonk Jeff or Rick. Rick. Why not Rich? Because we're working on a different oh, you today. Keep showing me it. What? I put it face down. Wow. Okay. Do not bonk Jeff or Rick. It should be Rich. Do not bonk. Closer to the red line, please. Do not bonk Jeff or Rick. Good correction. You want to say that's right? Good job.
Well. Hmm. Oh, sure it's a mic drop? Okay, I like the exclamation mark. That one does. It's almost a mic drop, but not quite. So, how about this? Capitals? Mm -hmm. Yep. Excellent. And ready? Good. And then, do not bump your forehead. Punctuations. Yep. Spelling good. Spelling is good. There's one word, and I'm going to tell Rick that you don't think he's important. Oh, come on. It's a name. I mean, I think that's a capital on Jeff. I'm not sure. It's a Jeff. It's also Jeff capital. So give Rick one, too. If they're left out. But excellent job, Seb. That's really good. So one thing left today is a quick review. If you have time in your lesson, then you can include something in the other section. Sometimes I teach students cursive writing if I know there's a little extra time in the lesson. Another thing you could do is work on punctuation or grammar ideas. You could work on sentence structure, even paragraph writing skills. If you're using the Read Naturally program because the student is ready to work on fluency, then that would be a great spot um, to introduce those reading comprehension questions that are given to you in the Read Naturally program. It might also be a spot where the student brings some continuous text that isn't controlled and they want to work on it because maybe they have you know, a great desire to read a certain book and you know it's within their level to do so, so you could help them with that. A lot of times I don't do the other section though because the lesson might just take all the time. The very last part of the lesson is you do a quick review. In this section, you ask some guiding questions so that the student can summarize the new concepts that they just learned in the current lesson and any key concepts from the most recent lessons that they're still working on because they haven't quite mastered them. Here's a video clip to show you how that might look. My name it look like a PDA, but it really doesn't matter, okay? So today we got the rule about the milk drug, the CK spelling rule. And let's do a quick review here. Do you want to explain why this word is spelled B-A-C-K? Back. Yeah, and here's the rules right here. Because Inside. there is no, it's a short vowel that you go up. Short vowel? And it's a, no consonant. No consonant before the? C-K. The K sound? Sound and how many syllables? It's a one syllable. You got it. Very yeah. good. The last thing that I wanted to show you is what my lesson plan might look like. I wanted to point out that on the right hand side of every lesson plan that I make, I have a teacher note section. And while I'm teaching a lesson, I'm jotting down notes, just making observations about what I'm seeing in my student. Later on, when I go to create the next lesson plan, because you know that all these lessons are completely individualized, I will use my notes to inform me as to what I should put into the next lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.